So those plants we call it silvestres or wild because it grows by itself on the hills. And those take like around 13 to 15 years, years to grow up and mature. So it takes longer, it gets smaller, but the mezcal that those produce, it has a lot more flavor, it has a lot more aroma than the espadin. The espadin is just like a plain mezcal with no flavor, no aroma. <coughs> we also have a blue agave, maguey azul, which is that one. So the blue agave, that's the one they use for tequila. So tequila and mezcal, they're kind of similar. The only difference between tequila and mezcal, to make the tequila, they only allow to use one type of agave, which is blue agave. To make the mezcal, we use more than 20 different types in agave. The process of the tequila is more industrial, like a massive production, and the process of the mezcal, it's mostly still artisanal process. And the domination of the region, if they make it in Jalisco, which is north of Mexico, they will call it tequila. But if you make it in region Oaxaca, we will call it mezcal. Yeah. And that's the only difference between tequila and mezcal. Wow. So when they have it ready, in the middle it's going to become like a long stick, which we call a quiote. So when it starts flowering, so that means that they have it ready to use. So what we're going to do, we're going to cut all the leaves. We're just going to use the bottom of it, which we call pineapple. Yeah. After we have it ready, what we're going to do, we're going to cut it in the smaller pieces, probably like four or six, depends how big it is. To make it more easy for us to cook it or to roast it, and right here is the fire pit. Is that that stick right there with flowers? Uh, this one is just a, this one I got with a lot of Ah, I see. Yeah, I will show you the stick. We have one right here. Sorry. Hello. So this is the stick. That's the stick that I come up from the guy. And you take yeah. this? This one is the stick, so ah. that that means that the agave has been mature. Okay. Holy crap, that's yeah. tall. Is so right, so right here is the fire pit. So this fire pit has a three meters under the ground and it's made out of rocks. What we're gonna do first, like half of it, we're gonna fill it up with wood. We're gonna use pine and mesquite. So we're gonna fire the wood and then on top of the fire, we're gonna put these rocks, and these are volcanic rocks. It will take us like around four or five hours to make the rocks really hot, like three the temperature that we need. And then after that, what we're gonna do, we're gonna cover the rocks with a layer of the fiber of the agave. And the fiber, it's just a leftover after the distillery. On top of the fiber, we're gonna put the agave already cut in smaller pieces. So right here, we're gonna put like around 10 tons of agave. So it's gonna go up probably like a minute and a half up. It's gonna be like a little mountain. Wow. On top of the agave, we're gonna cover with the same leaves of the agave or we're gonna cover the whole thing with tarp. And we're gonna put the, uh, the, the dirt on top of the tarp. So that way all the heat and the smoke will stay inside of the pit. And that's why the mezcal has the smoky taste because the way that we roast it. We're gonna keep it here for seven days. After seven days it's gonna become sweet, the smoky and juicy. And we're gonna move it up for the next process. And that's how it looks I've after being roasted. Yeah. Yeah, so As you can smell it now, it smells really sweet. Yeah. Really smoky. That's beautiful. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna move it up right here. Smash it, we're gonna crush it. So we call it Molino or Tarpit. What we're gonna do, we're gonna bring some of the gavel ready roasted. We're going to cut it even in the smaller pieces using the machete. And then we're gonna use a horse. So we're gonna tie the horse to the rock. Okay. So the horse gonna pull the rock in a circle to smash and crush the gavel. There is no liquid or juice come from it. It was making like a paste, like a mash. So we're gonna collect it and we're going to put it into one of these containers 
for the fermentation process. So that's how it looks after it's been smashed. So what we did right here, we took all the mash. The first day we add hot water. The second day we add cold water. We just mix it up really well and we keep it here for two weeks to ferment. And it's a natural fermentation. We don't add any yeast or anything, it's all natural. Yeah. After two weeks, what we're gonna get here, we call it tepache, which has an eight to 10 percentage of alcohol. Mm -hmm. After the fermentation is done, what we're gonna do, we're going to distill it. That smells really good. Yeah, it smells like uh, vinegar, it's like uh, beer. It smells like alcohol. Yeah. I can get drunk just smelling it. I don't know it's <laughs> like air. So what we're gonna do next, we're gonna move it, uh, we're gonna distill it right here. We have a mood oven. Inside of it, we have a big pot. It's a copper, we call it a, a lambic. This one we call bell, a turban, and serpentine or coil, okay. the one that we have right here in the water. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the top. We're gonna use buckets and a wheelbarrow. We're gonna get the fiber and the liquid from that container. So we're gonna put it into this copper pot. We're gonna fill it up, close it back again, seal it all the way around with the same paste of the cabin. And then we're gonna put the fire down there. So when it's like getting really hot, it starts boiling, the alcohol evaporates, it goes all the way through the pipe. When it passes through the cooling system, it's when it condenses. And that's why we fill this with water to help the coil to cool down the steam, to condense the steam. And we got the mezcal drips up right there. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. And that's the way that we make the mezcal. Never seen it. Questions? When we drink. All right, let's move on to the bar. <laughs> I'm talking like I'm about to drink a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta work. <laughs> Where are you going next now? Uh, back, to Dallas. back to Dallas. Back to Dallas? Uh -huh. What'd you tell him? Yeah, the it was like an oily, fatty taste. Okay. All right, so right here, I have this for mezcals, which is made with the same plant. It's made with the avispadine, the one that we cultivate. This is the young one. That's the one that drips off after the distillery. We call it young or white. Yeah. So what we're gonna do, if we're not gonna bottle it, we're gonna put it in a white oak barrels for six months with the worm. So you give it like an oily, fatty taste of the mezcal. After we keep it more than a year in a cask, we call it age. This one has been aged one year, and this one has been aged eight year. So this two is gonna be smoother, softer, more woody taste, but the percentage of alcohol is the same. So it will make it drunk in the same way, no matter which one you're gonna drink. We also use this young mezcal as a base to do the liqueurs or the creams. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna mix it up with honey to make it sweet, fruit and milk. And those are only 13 or 19 percent of alcohol. And right here, I have three of the Sylvester ones, three of the plants that is not cultivated. This one is made with the guy called Madre Quish. It has a 49 percent of alcohol. And this one was distilled in a clay pot. So instead of using copper, we use clay. This one is made with tegabe called Coyote. It has a 50 percent of tobacco. It's a hundred proof. And this mezcal, if you drink too That's much... Death. <laughs> 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 this one, if you drink too much and get drunk, you're gonna be hallucinating. Yeah. Because this plant usually grow like next to the magic mushroom. So it's still a Yes. And this one is made with tegabe called Tobala with a 47 percent of tobacco. So would you like to start from here to all the way to the end? So this contains silicin in there? Wow. Wait, you mean I all of that down there? Yeah, the all of that all the way to the end. And this is the same down there? Yeah. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> And I got, I'm gonna post this video like months away. I don't wanna get random. <laughs> okay, you ready? Am I ready? No, tell <laughs> <clears throat> Oh my god. This is a hundred proof tequila. Wait, how much was this one? It's 48. 48, and the one in the middle was a hundred proof. This one is the first one was a hundred proof. That's a hundred proof? <clears throat> how much is this bottle right here? That's a 2200 pesos. Yeah, about this one. This one, it's like 70 Oh, that's not. Oh. Like $100. That's <laughs> very smooth. It's really smooth. You see now, you're liking it. I like that. I or am I getting drunk? Yeah. If you drink too much, you get drunk, yeah. 
not, not just like drunk hallucination, like everything just sucks. But you have to get drunk to feel it, like to feel this nation. Can I try the worm? It's kind of like you'll get the munition. I'm, I'm gonna try the worm. I wanna feel frisky before my battery dies. Yeah. So they said I gotta eat this worm. It's gonna. Uh, wait a minute. How, wait, wait, taste? so I put it in. It tastes like mezcal. It has been sucked in mezcal. So okay, what, what about the one? Oh, like a, like a fresh one? Right. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. Salud. This is a damn worm. You wanna get one? I want you to eat it. <laughs> How does it taste? It tastes really good. It tastes like mezcal. What tastes like me? What's the elevation? Yeah, wait, you're not going to eat one? <laughs> I have too much already. <laughs> one more. Uh, I don't really know. 5,000? I kind of like, yeah. Yeah, it's not going to get drunk pretty fast. Sure, not one more? Just one more? <laughs> nah, I'm just tired of one. I had one thing of margarita, 7,000 feet. Okay. New Mexico, I got drunk. Oh, really? One thing of margarita. I'm this is the damn world. Anyway. If I get sick, you're not gonna get sick because it's been in mezcal. Y'all not gonna eat one with me? You bought like four. So you have all the food. I just thought I was gonna like drink some with the worm sitting in there. No, 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 no. Okay. It's moving. No, it's not moving. You have to chew it. Do I have to chew it? If you want to, you can chew it. It's gonna pop up in your mouth. It's gonna do what? It's gonna pop up. Like is, it, is it crunchy? No, it's really smooshy. Oh, shout out to the right? Yeah. Okay. Just swallow it. It's gonna come alive and eat all your food. So this is the one we Ah! Oh! 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 I just got back to my room. My battery died, so I had to wait to it actually charge up. So I actually just ended up going down to the lobby and getting some foods. I had like a so before you click off this video, please, please, please do me a favor and please subscribe to this channel if you have not already and click the bell so that you can always be notified for this content that I'm giving you. And please, if you have not already, please like this video so I know that you are enjoying the type of content that I'm putting out here because I'm still new to this. I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing, trying to find my way, you know. Share this video on your personal um, social media oh, wow. website. That is the only way that I'm going to grow. You can always find me on Instagram at Trevi Evie. Same name as my YouTube name, so it's very easy. Go ahead and head over there. Add me. I'll add you. Let's add each other. Let's be friends. That's all I'm saying. And please, 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 always remember, 